chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, the ghostly sanitarium. There was almost a death an hour in this place. I'm ready to go. As long as I got my girls with me, I can do anything. Welcome to Waverly. It's just too easy to walk out. I mean, that's not the name of the game. I warned you. Okay, I'm scared right now. Who would get married in a haunted Scottish castle? would like to experience something we could take back with us for a lifetime. It's a big year for a wedding, huh? So obviously, execution's been here. I felt a lot of screaming as we came in through the door. So if everyone runs out screaming, do we get our money back? <laughs> <laughs> a spirit in a lighthouse. What we want to do is get down to the bottom of this. I looked up there. I said, my gosh, it's the ghost. It was, you believe in ghosts? Bad day I did. So you guys ready for this? Door is shut. Locked. It's on a different page, you guys. No. I swear to God. No, this scary. Eerie sounds, darkened corridors, a sensation of the supernatural. Ask anyone in Louisville, Kentucky to describe what scares them and they'll point to a hilltop 10 miles outside of town. The site, an abandoned tuberculosis sanitarium known as Waverly Hills. In the 1920s, this was a place where people were sent to die which they did by the thousands. It is believed that the spirits of those who died at Waverly Hills are trapped there in death, just as they were in life. Through the 20s and 30s, there was almost a death an hour in this place. TB was considered a plague. They wanted to cure anybody, they just up early died. Waverly Hills Sanitarium. Louisville, Kentucky. For a lot of people, a diagnosis of TB really was a death sentence. Many people died at Waverly Hills. It was a disease that knew no sort of boundaries. Waverly Hills had to be on that hill. It had to be away from town to really isolate people with active TB disease from the rest of the population. At one time, tuberculosis was the leading cause of death in the United States. It can attack any part of the body, but most often it attacks the lungs. A hemorrhage, coughing up blood, blood streaks, sputum. Tiredness, fever. There was people dying every day then. You didn't have any cure. It was terrible. The morgue area there has a place with three trays in it that you keep three bodies at one time. A tunnel next to the morgue was used to transport the steady stream of corpses. Their last ride on this site would have been through the tunnel. The tunnel was a discreet, sensitive way of removing the dead to a temporary morgue that was in the valley below. Patients wouldn't see this going on. No, I never seen a hearse up there. In 1962, Waverly Hills closed its doors forever. With the new wonder drugs, which could now finally actually cure tuberculosis, facilities like Waverly Hills were no longer necessary. For 40 years, the massive building had stood abandoned. My dad used to work up here, and I thought to myself, gee, I think there's something I could do with this place to keep it from getting tore down, so uh, I bought it. After I bought it, uh, I found out I got a lot more than what I bargained for. 
I can sure understand how people can have a sense of it being haunted. It's the hulk of a building that just stands there, shrouded in the trees, so isolated and so dark. Countless times I've been walking through doing something or carrying something, and I'll hear something and I'll stop like I know somebody is looking at me, because you get that feeling, and you'll, you'll have that hair raise up on the back of your neck. It's supposed to be a little girl and that they see her and she's just kind of like sitting in a, uh, in a corner on one of the floors. And that when they go to approach this child, she just disappears. She's not there. When I bought this place, my daughter is very excited because she came up here in high school and got scared away. And so she never came back. And then when she heard I was buying it, she just went crazy, said she had to come up here and go through the place. Everybody knows what it is in Louisville. It's like a known thing. You bring up the name, they're like, oh yeah. They've either been up there or they've heard about it. Christy has recruited five friends to spend the night in the Waverly Hills Sanitarium. You can cuddle on summer. I will, yeah, trust me. I'll be behind you going. <laughs> I'm gonna hoe about it. I'm ready to go. I mean, as long as I got my girls with him, I can do anything, you know? Like, it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And, like, I'd be stupid not to take it. Like, I'm excited. And I think hearing stuff may not scare me as much as actually seeing it. Actually seeing a ghost would freak me out, probably. I want to see spirits, ghosts, whatever, something move. I want to see it. I was excited. I couldn't wait to do it. I don't want to spend, like, the whole night there and then kind of be let down. I mean, I want to see something. You know, most people think that probably none of us can do this. You know, we're just a bunch of girls that are big chickens, but we're all here to prove them wrong. Nothing's going to stop me. I ain't run I'm not running out. I'm going to go in there, and I'm, <laughs> if I see a ghost, I'm going to freak out. But I ain't going nowhere. I know she'll get scared up here. I, I just know my daughter. I think it's a good thing for her to get out of her system. A member of the Louisville Paranormal League leads the girls into Waverly Hills. Watch your step. Every once in a while, somebody will come up here, some of their friends. They'll see a woman running out the front door screaming and hollering. Her arms flowing with blood. Oh, my God. No one knows who she might be. Possibly one of the insane tuberculosis patients that lived up on the fifth floor in 502. Which I hope you all get to see tonight. She's gonna freak out. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Waverly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the foyer. Over there you had nurse's station, records, overlook, elevator shaft. Down that hallway, the former gift shop, x-rays, and the morgue. Over one person an hour died here, on average, at Waverly. The rate of tuberculosis was that high. With that much death and suffering, don't you think something could still be here? The third floor, where people claim to have seen the ghost of a little girl. One of the most important stories associated with Waverly is the sighting of a little girl from one of the third story windows. Nobody knows exactly who she is or how she came to be in Waverly. Say that she's about six or seven, blonde, wearing a little nightgown, just running up and down the hall. The fifth floor, where insane patients were kept. Now, I know that some of you have probably seen the number 502 painted all over the walls here. Yeah. That's because 502 is probably one of the most notorious rooms in all of Waverly. It was a nurse's bathroom where supposedly one of the nurses was killed by an inmate. Murder. The second floor, where the apparition of a man in white has been reported. The person they call Ralph. Ralph is believed to be the ghost of a maintenance man that worked here at Waverly. During the 1940s and 50s. Oh my God! 
It looks, I think it's a mirror. Oh my gosh. What is that? Is that a mirror? That's a mirror. Is it a clock? Oh, it's a mirror. It's a mirror. Oh, With the morgue and the tunnel. This room right here was the autopsy room. This is where they did the autopsies. Ooh! What was that? Where they put bodies in there? Yeah. After they were done cutting them up? This is where they would slide the bodies in. They just wheeled them down here, down the hall, after they were done doing the autopsy. And then take them out here, put them in a casket, roll them down the body chute. To keep up patient morale, they basically created the body chute as a way to hide the fact that there were so many people dying. Welcome to the body chute. They would just slide the bodies down there all the way to the end where there'd be a railroad car sitting there, load up the caskets on there and just ship them down. I can't, I can't, I gotta go. I gotta go. Sorry. Think about where are you going by yourself? You are with more people here and then we leave you alone. Well, no offense, Christy, but you're not much bigger than me, so you can't really do much for me. I know. Nor can anybody else here. Nobody can, but you're going to be, who's going to go with you? That's Summer in the Coleman. I got you, girl. I'm scared enough, too. In this building, no place seems safe. Keep walking down the hall here. And you have, believe it or not, the gift shop. Next. This is like this close to it for me. It's just too easy to walk out. I mean, that's not the name of the game. I warned you. <laughs> okay, I'm scared right now. Yes, yeah, very scared. Keep walking down the hall here, and you have the gift shop. The girls retreat to the safe room. Oh, what was it? <laughs> what was it? That's because we just booked it fast. Oh, I have to this, this is this is like this close to it for me. Who was that? I don't know. Let's go find out. No, I don't want to start. I don't want to be. Come on. Let's go. Too much weird stuff's been going on. It's freaking me out. I mean, I know we're not going to get hurt either. It's just, I don't know. I feel creepy in this place. It's so big. It's so abandoned. It's so quiet. And I am so scared. Well, no, but you're just making our group smaller. You're taking our comfort zone. Group motto was it's a group thing. And now it's not so much a group thing. I mean, it's disappointing. It's, but, I mean, if you absolutely, it is. I mean, if you I absolutely know, have to leave, like I mean, we'll be able to deal with it. But if you leave, you just realize that you're leaving us here by ourselves, and you're leaving and you're going home, and that's disappointing. It's just too easy to walk out. I mean, that's not the name of the game. You come up here and you stay the night. But I think if I stay, I'm going to bring you down. That's the honest that's truth. Way I, feel I think I'm going to bring you down. Tisha and Amy decide to leave with Jay. Well, I wish you all the best of luck. How many people have? Ever attempted to stay in here all night long? You're a lot braver than I am. Amy. Bye. Bye. I'm so glad to be out of there. This will be the first, last, and only time I go through this place. I'll never be back. 1:45 a.m.
the girls decide to return to the most haunted areas of the building. I'll go first. <laughs> That's right, you will. I'll go third. I'll go second. Just tell me when you want me to stop. Dude, I got your bike. Don't worry. I don't know, but I'm doing... I'm, I got double protection here. From my... What was that? What the hell was that? Just, I want to listen for what a second. Oh my gosh. What kind of, what would make that sound? Oh my gosh, oh my I feel God. it vibrate right underneath me. Oh my okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm scared right now. Get yes, that very scared. Out. There's some crazy sound upstairs. It's getting closer. It's right above our head. I don't know what it quit. Anything like it stops. quit. What do you think? I think it was coming from above. Yeah. So should we go above? Because that's where the actual find it. I really don't want to find it. But you don't want to go to five above if you don't want to go up there. I don't want to go up there, but if everybody else goes up there, I think I'm gay. 2 a.m. The fourth floor. If I put the flashlight thing on now. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Hello, little girl. Oh my gosh. Did you see a light? What was that? <laughs> we just saw this like white light go past, like almost like a okay. piece of cloth or on something. On the outside of this little thing. Come on, let's go. Like walking outside, outside. Let's go. I'm not going out there. No way. There's something on this floor. So that was freaky. Floor two has been the worst. Two thirty a.m. Room. Five oh two. This is where somebody was murdered. Yeah. So go in. Yeah. Okay. Good pictures. Hmm. I want to take You're a picture of this room in case something shows yeah. up on the phone. Together. Hold on to me. This is me and Jessica are going in room 502. Not just the room, the stall where somebody's actually killed. You feel it like the coldness too? Yeah, it's like on the back of my neck. Chills. What's it say in there? Is it the killing room? room? The killing room? I might get in there. Bathed in blood. I got like <laughs> chills on the back of my neck. I it's know. like hot and it also has like cold. Something described my purse. I don't, feel, I don't know if it's just me getting on there. Okay, well, someone just touched here. me if anybody cares. <laughs> Pulled your strap off? I was just standing there. Christy's standing right here. Nobody was over here. I was standing backed up in the corner. It was like somebody like brushed up against me. Like My strap didn't call, come off, but it was like kind of like that and brushed against my arm. Now I got chills in the back of my neck. Okay. Eleven? I warned you. What was that? <laughs> oh my gosh, go! <laughs> go. Hey, crew lights are out. Oh shoot! Where's our lights? That's it, I'm leaving. 4 a.m. One final destination. The tunnel. Somebody hold on, everybody hold on to me. Hold on to me because I'm freaking out. It's cold here. And it's yeah. freezing. It's cold. You just feel like Do, you, do y'all feel that? 10 degrees I mean, does it? Oh, I do not want to go back down here. Oh, there's that thing. Oh my God! Was that pulled out? No, no. That no, was, he was pulled it? back in. No, it was not pulled out. Remember? And we went through this one. We it was not out. I think that's what we heard. That's what we heard when we were upstairs. I'm gonna throw it. I'm scared. You know, I see the Nothing there. 
Oh, uh, I'm, I'm really not going down the street. I'm sorry. Oh, I can't. That's enough. I don't think that's totally it. I can't take any more. They're forceful. They've got power. They've got power. They're pushing. I'm terrified. This is, I'm, I'm terrified. I don't, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to leave. Yeah, me too. Go, go. When I seen the body slide come out, I didn't hear it, see it come out, but when I heard it, that was it. I never expected anything like that would happen. I didn't think I'd leave. I didn't think it'd be a big deal. I'm just in total shock right now. Complete shock. I will never stay here again. Ever. Never. Not in the daytime. No. Coming up next. Who would get married in a haunted Scottish castle? It's a big deal for huh? The obviously execution has been here. I felt a lot of screaming as we came in through the door. So if everyone runs out screaming, do we get our money back? <laughs> <laughs> Brian Lacombe and Tanya Wilson were looking for a place to get married. They couldn't imagine a more romantic spot than a castle in Scotland. What they failed to realize was that the location being considered was Balgany Castle, a site legendary for its history of hauntings. Brian and Tanya were not prepared for what they would encounter there. But then, who could be? A couple from Texas is traveling to Balgoni Castle, Scotland. The reason we're in Scotland is to look for a place where we could possibly get married. We wanted to go someplace that had some history and some interesting things to see. This is really our first vacation together. It's a beautiful little town. That's pretty. Look at all the flowers and everything. Uh -huh. We're planning to get married on September 8th. Look at all these stones. Mm -hmm. We'd like to experience something we could take back with us for a lifetime. Wow, look at this place. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Come on, let's go. Wow, look at this. Mm -hmm. This would be good for a wedding, huh? Yeah, this so would far. be really pretty. Have a little reception out here or something? Brian and Tanya meet the owner of Balgoni Castle. Welcome to Balgoni. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Come Brian. On. The tower is a, a medieval fortress, and it's officially classed by Historic Scotland as one of the finest in the country of the 14th century. The people that we can prove have been here have been King James IV in 1496, and then we had Mary, Queen of Scots in 1565, one of our most notorious ones was Rob Roy McGregor. He garrisoned the castle on the 20th of January 1716 with 200 clansmen and 20 captured English soldiers. In the early days, the laird had his own court officially and he had the power of execution. It was known as the power of the pit and the gallows. So obviously execution has been here. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Brian. Uh -huh. This is Tanya. Hello. Stuart, that's on. Hi. And this is home. So y'all have weddings here pretty regularly, then. Yes. And where do you usually have the ceremonies at? We have a 14th century chapel, oh. a real working chapel. Then. We can do receptions as well if necessary. You'll see that later, then. And then our, our other claim to fame is all the uh, supernatural beings we have here as well. Huh. We have a lady walks in the building on the far side of the courtyard. Uh, she's known as the Green Lady or Green Genie. She's known locally and then My wife saw her, what, about four or five times. One evening, I was just going outside the door and I saw this sort of um, shape in the window. I wasn't really sure whether I was seeing something or not. I came to the conclusion, actually, that I had seen Green Genie. Does it seem like there's a certain time of year or a certain... No, the, or anything there's no rhyme or reason. They appear and disappear any time of the day. On one occasion... I did feel very uneasy in the Great Hall and did leave rather hurriedly. I was in here at night, I just had a couple of candles on for light, and suddenly the whole room went cold. And I fe felt this tingling sensation go up my back, and I couldn't put the candles out quick enough 
and get out of the room. And one or two people at receptions have claimed to have seen things or felt So if everyone runs out screaming, do we get our money back? We <laughs> 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 pay extra for that, huh? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Locals know better than to get married at the castle. My friend had a wedding there. I was a bridesmaid. The chapel that you go into is very dark, quite cold, and we're halfway through the service and every candle just went out all of a sudden. Sixty of us all left in total darkness. I heard something that made me look up at the parapet. I saw there was actually a figure or something that isn't normal. There's a lot of people in this village, including myself, who've had very, very bad experiences up there. And at the moment we have here, President of the Scottish Psychic Research Society. There's considerable psychic activity at Balgoni Castle. And a delightful Lady Frances. I have worked as a, a medium for a good number of years. And they've been doing some research here for us. And so this was the 14th century chapel. There were people forced into there under terrible circumstances. I felt there was something underneath to do with the foundation. There was a lot of water underneath. At one time, people were kept prisoner in here. I felt a lot of screaming as we came in through the door. It has been used to keep people entombed. There was a human skeleton found about the 1912s when it was being partly restored. We don't know if it's male or female, only what happened to it, unfortunately. Figures we see here are either green, grey or white. They're quite solid for seconds and they simply vaporise or fade away. The green lady, we've seen her, she walks behind the iron bars in this building. She always walks from left to right, past the first window, turns to face you at the second window. Oh, this is beautiful. It is. This would be the Great Hall. Yes, this is where you'd have your meals and entertainment in this room. Now here we have a very different sort of feel to the room. Here there's really considerable psychic activity and there are voices that can be heard here. There was a gentleman, what we would now term a spy, but he didn't survive very long and unfortunately he had his throat cut. Do you feel at this moment that he is with us? Yes, he's over there. Perhaps that makes you feel uncomfortable with him. Uncertain about the castle as the site for their wedding, Brian and Tanya explore alone. Think you want to get married here, huh? I don't know. It definitely. Ah! 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 I said, watch out. Don't be scared. Let's go see. This was the prison over here. That's probably where they cut people's heads off. Oh, look at this. I've seen faces all over the place. Yeah, I definitely see it. Looks like a man's head coming out of the rock. Well, let's go back in. People have had their wedding here and everything, but I just think it would make me too nervous. On After that seeing day. and hearing what we've heard. Yeah. There's a lot of energy here, and obviously a lot of people have died here. Whether their spirits are here for good or bad, we don't know. I think it's a huge mistake you even coming here.
Coming up next, a spirit in a lighthouse. What we want to do is get down to the bottom of this. I looked up there. I said, my gosh, it's the ghost. You guys ready for this? Door is shut. Locked. It's on a different page, you guys. I swear to God. It's a French expression which means only choice. A good name for a remote point of land that stretches far out into northern Lake Michigan. Once a safe harbor for the French fishermen who founded the site. Today, Sichua is anything but safe. Something in the past has left a sinister mark on this place. A curse upon the residents of Sichua. Sichua Point is the most haunted area on the Great Lakes. We have more reported activity through the centuries here than we have any other area. Locals say the most haunted place at Sushua is the old lighthouse. Lighthouses seem to be a beacon for ghosts and spirits. Shishwa Point can be a gold mine for paranormal investigation because something is here, and it's been here for a long, long time. Shishwa Point was extremely treacherous, and it was feared by all of the mariners in northern Lake Michigan. In the 25 shipwrecks that we know sank offshore of, of Shishwa, there were at least 500 people that lost their lives. Shipwrecks are a relatively natural occurrence, but some of the other things that have gone on here are really inexplicable. We've had over 150 documented cases where people have had paranormal activity or experiences. And what we want to do is get down to the bottom of this as to why are these things happening. The Gulliver Historical Society asked us to come out here and do a documentary on all the supernatural things that happen around here. I think I'm kind of one of those people who has to see it. I probably have to see it to believe it, but I actually do believe it from the stories that I've heard. This is something you guys have to really investigate. Who do you believe it is? I believe it's Joseph Willie Townsend. He was lightkeeper here from 1902 to 1910. Mr. Townsend died in the lighthouse, and he had a real terrible death. They could hear him screaming outside. He was in such pain, and eventually he succumbed to cancer. They brought his body down here and embalmed him. In the basement? Right here. They bled him here, and his blood drained into these sinks. What is really weird about this, us being down here today, um, this is the 91st anniversary of Mr. Townsend's death. Wow. It's sort of freaky if you ask me. Wow. Is that common to embalm bodies right in the house that they died in? Wow. Uh, from that period of time, the early 1900s, the bodies were embalmed in the house and they were on view for the whole neighborhood. The body was laid out in the upstairs foyer right in front of the staircase. And we've had a lot of activity right there in that area. The students interview locals about unexplained experiences. I looked up there and I, I said, my gosh, it's the ghost. And why do you believe that that was Mr. Townsend up there? The way he was dressed, yeah. his beard and the buttons on his jacket, it was all very clear, clear and very was... real. It sounded like somebody was coming down the staircase here. Couldn't see anybody, but the footsteps were still coming towards me. We had heard noises in the house, like slamming things against the wall and onto the floor. We heard from a guy that someone bought an Indian burial ground that was dug up when they were putting in a road. Do you know anything about that? The story was that when they put the road in going to the lighthouse, they came upon some bones and artifacts of certain sorts. They went through this sand hill, and when they did, they pushed out these Indian graves, played with their heads, put up sticks in the sand, stuck their head on it. Do you believe that her spirits are still in this house? I believe they are, and they're unsettled. There's got to be a spirit here that loves to play tricks on you 
loves to let you know that it's there with you when you're there. We've smelled the smoke, both of us, in this room over here. Yeah, we smell the smoke strong. very strong. Do yeah. you guys ever go look around to see if anybody in the building is smoking cigars? Yep. Oh, yeah. We always yep. look. If we smell it, we check it. Do you know anything about the silverware? I have seen the silverware change. Sometimes I work here till 6 o'clock the night before, and the next morning I'll come here, and the fork will be in the plate like that. So you're going to show us the beer? Yeah. Uh, it was a PBS station. Uh, came out and they stayed all night in this lighthouse and they had a camera in this room and when they played the camera back this mirror was all steamed and a picture of Mr. Townsend was right in the mirror. Here are some of the things that we experienced. Now you might have noticed the mirror we saw two distinct faces in the mirror. The top face had a skeletal looking jaw which melted into the next face. We saw it, my whole crew saw it. Nobody can explain that. That'd we should awesome. do that, that'd be cool. We should ask yeah, if we could spend the night at the lighthouse. Yeah, we should. Maybe we could actually hear the footsteps going up and down the stairs or upstairs or whatever. It always seems that it ends when the people go to look for it or it ends when they stop to hear it. So. Maybe it'll be different for us if we go stay out there. I would like to have something happen to me so I can actually prove that there's ghosts in the lighthouse. He has been known to change pages in the Bible. Hopefully this might make me a total believer, might not. Do you believe in ghosts? That day I did. Hopefully it is haunted, because that would be cool. <laughs> Coming up next, a night in the lighthouse. You guys ready for this? I definitely smell it. Yep. It's on a different page, you guys. Nuh-uh. I swear to God. Oh my God, you guys gotta, Wait, you gotta rewind it. You gotta see that right. So you guys ready for this? You? You gonna stay up all night? Pretty much. Midnight. The filmmakers return to the lighthouse alone hoping to document paranormal activity. I just see a whole bunch of bats. The screen door is latched. The door is shut. Locked. Now the silverware is normal. normal. The fork is on the left hand side and the knife and the spoon. And Nothing is flipped over. Okay. I am... Setting up this night vision camera. We're gonna go up in the tower. Yeah, and leave this running while we're up there, just, just in case thing. we miss anything. Ready to go up? Yep, let's go climb it. See what we can find here. Here we go. Students come down and make a strange discovery. Yeah, I smell cigar smoke right now. Yeah. Oh wow, really strong right here too. Cigar smoke. It's not in here. It's right where this little circle of us. It's still yep. here. I can smell it. Yeah. I definitely smell yep. it. Okay, that's awesome. This is where we heard the painting. What was that? There it is again. Shh. Somebody's walking upstairs. I know that something's in here. This one's straight? Yeah. Get ready. Should you say that? Nothing in the mirror up here. Uh-uh. I'm going to say it's part of the mirror. Yeah, so he's playing. He's playing hard. Yeah. We're mainly downstairs. All right. Yeah. Downstairs. Um, watch action upstairs. Downstairs, isn't it? Okay. Let's go. 
decides to recheck the dining room. It's really cold in this room, though. Yeah. Hey, the door. No, I just heard something. The Bible, the tweet, the Bible. It's on a different page, you guys. No. -uh. I swear to God. 27 it was on. The, the crucifix. It's back. It's back one page. Oh, wow, it is because there was a picture of, like, Jesus on that one page. It's back. This it's picture good. right here. Yeah. It moved over. One more. One more. Okay. Move to right here, and it was on this page right here. Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The plain account of matter, says Townsend, seems to be this. Townsend. Townsend. It's spelled different, but it's still, you see, it's yeah, like Townsend. 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 He was trying to make a point, saying, hey, you know, this is what happened. 3 a.m. Justin checks the night vision camera for further evidence of spirit activity. This guy is still in the same spot. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Do you guys just Oh my god, do you guys gotta Wait, we need rewind, no, we gotta rewind, rewind it? Do you guys gotta watch, watch this hair? Holy Wait, what did you guys see? Yeah, I've seen that. Hair. That you gotta, gotta watch that oh, chair right yeah, there. Yeah, that chair right there. That no, just moved. Like, it looked like something you see. It did. It, it I moved. Seen it. I seen that. There ain't nobody in there. No. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. That's so That's weird. That's not right. That chair can't I mean, why? move by itself. But look at it. Look at it. When we move it, there's something holding it to where it would only go so far. That must be what happened. The filmmakers now believe they have conclusive proof of the lighthouse spirit. I was frightened, frightened. right out of my shoes, and now... That's when it excitement. happens, you just want to yeah. take off running, yeah, you know, and just... Yeah, we this actually happened. makes me feel more that it is Joseph Willie Townsend. We smelt the cigar, and we were seeing the chair move in the Bible. Townsend's last name in it, and I've never seen that, you know, never even heard of that in the Bible yet. I came here not believing in ghost spirits, supernatural stuff. I am now a believer. <laughs> yeah. Something is going on. Yeah, totally. something is definitely going on. Definitely Townsend. Yep. So what is it that makes a place scary? Is it a history of death and disease? A chill wind down a darkened corridor? Or the feeling of being watched from the shadows? For some, it's not what can be seen, but what cannot. The unknown. I'm Linda Blair. Good night. disease from the rest of the population. At one time, tuberculosis was the leading cause of death in the United States. It can attack any part of the body, but most often it attacks the lungs. A hemorrhage, coughing up blood, blood streak sputum. Tiredness, fever. There was people dying every day then. You didn't have any cure. It was terrible. The morgue area there has a place with three trays in it that you keep three bodies at one time. A tunnel next to the morgue was used to transport the steady stream of corpses. Their last ride on this site would have been through the tunnel. The tunnel was a discreet, sensitive way of removing... Site, an abandoned tuberculosis sanitarium. 
known as Waverly Hills. In the 1920s, this was a place where people were sent to die, which they did by the thousands. It is believed that the spirits of those who died at Waverly Hills are trapped there in death, just as they were in life. Through the 20s and 30s, there was almost a death an hour in this place. TB was considered a plague. They wasn't curing anybody, they was just up early they died. Waverly Hills Sanitarium, Louisville, Kentucky. For a lot of people, a diagnosis of TB really was a death sentence. Many people died at Waverly Hills. It was a disease that knew no sort of boundaries. Waverly Hills had to be on that hill. It had to be away from town to really isolate people with act. So you guys ready for this? Door is shut. Locked. It's on a different page, you guys. No. I swear to God. Yeah, this is awesome. It's so a place scary. Eerie sounds, darkened corridors, a sensation of the supernatural. Ask anyone in Louisville, Kentucky to describe what scares them and they'll point to a hilltop 10 miles outside of town. Moving the dead to a temporary morgue that was in the valley below. Patients wouldn't see this going on. No, I never seen a hearse up there. In 1962, Waverly Hills closed its doors forever. With the new wonder drugs, which could now finally actually cure tuberculosis, facilities like Waverly Hills were no longer necessary. For 40 years, the massive building had stood abandoned. My dad used to work up here, and I thought to myself, Gee, I think there's something I could do with this place to keep it from getting tore down, so uh, I bought it. After I bought it, uh, I found out I got a lot more than what I bargained for. I can sure understand how people can have a sense of it being haunted. It's the hulk of a building that just stands there, shrouded in the trees, so isolated and so dark. Chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on earth, the ghostly sanitarium. There was almost a death an hour in this place. I'm ready to go. As long as I got my girls with me, I can do anything. Welcome to Waverly. It's just too easy to walk out. I mean, that's not the name of the game. I warned you. Okay, I'm scared right now. <laughs> Who would get married in a haunted Scottish castle? would like to experience something we could take back with us for a lifetime. It's a big year for what you know. So obviously execution's been here. I felt a lot of screaming as we came in through the door. So if everyone runs out screaming, do we get our money back? <laughs> <laughs> a spirit in a lighthouse. What we want to do is get down to the bottom of this. I looked up there, I said, my gosh, it's the ghost. Do you believe in ghosts? That day I did. 